Hey, it's Andy with the Mandel team at Remax, and I'm here to bring you your November 2021 housing market update. As always, for the purposes of these videos, we're talking about single family homes only in Boca, Parkland, and Coral Springs, no condos, no townhouses, no country clubs, no 55 and over. And we're here to give you the leading indicators showing you where the real estate market is headed, not where it's been. So let's get into it. The first stat we like to look at is the number of new homes hitting the market, the supply. That is down 15% compared to this time last year. So there's a lot of areas across the country where inventory is starting to pick up a little bit, nothing substantial. We, we really just have not seen that here. We're 15% fewer homes hitting the market in October of 2021 compared to October of 2020. So still very low supply. At the same time, the number of homes going off the market and coming pending is only down 4%. So way fewer homes hitting the market. Demand is not coming down anywhere near as much. So uh, supply and demand tells us way fewer homes hitting the market. Demand is still about the same. That should lead to an increase in prices. And that's really what we've seen. It's still a very competitive market. The next stat we like to look at is the number of days it takes a home to sell. So that on average was 12 days. Uh, that's a little bit lower from where it was last year. It's a little higher than where we were earlier on in the year. We were seeing, you know, five, six, seven days on market earlier this year. We're up to 12. Now, the good homes are still selling in literally one or two days. They're still getting multiple offers, still very competitive, but there are a lot more homes that are sitting on the market just a little bit longer. What does that mean for you? If you're thinking about buying a home, you still have to make a competitive offer. You still have to make a decision quickly, but you might have a little more time and it's a little bit less competitive than it was five, six months ago. The next stat we like to look at is the closed sales price to list price. So what percentage of sellers asking prices are they getting? And on average, that's at 99.3% sales price to list price. So that's a little bit down from where it was earlier in the year as well. We were at like 101% back in summer. It's a little bit less and that's an average. So again, we have listings that are still selling above the asking price, but on average, it's a little bit less. So again, it's a little bit easier if you're a buyer now than it was six, seven months ago to buy a home. Now, the last stat we like to look at is the month's supply of inventory. What this tells us is that if no more homes were to hit the market at the current pace of sales, how quick would it take for all of the homes on the market to sell? They say a balanced market is six months. Anything more than six months of inventory is a buyer's market. Anything less than six months is a seller's market. On average, we're at 1.01 months worth of inventory. That's basically where we've been since kind of the beginning of the pandemic here. That is a super seller's market. We are still in a really strong seller's market. There's not a lot of inventory. With homes, inventory being this low and demand still being as high as it is, there's only one way for prices to continue to go if this all remains the same. So we are continuing to predict home prices to increase, but there's good news. So let, let's recap. What does this all mean if you're a seller? Well, it is still an excellent time to put your home on the market. It's still a great time to be a seller. You have not missed the market yet. But what I'm personally seeing anecdotally is that where in January, February, we were getting like 25 offers on any one of our listings and we were getting all the crazy terms, paying way above list price, waiving appraisals, all that stuff. We're seeing on average now probably four to six offers on most of our listings. It really depends on the listing. Some of them are still getting more, but on average, I would say four to six offers compared to the 25. Now those offers that are coming in are still very competitive. We're still seeing the good terms that we were seeing earlier in the year with buyers paying above appraised value. They're having short inspection periods, short loan approval periods. So you still have to write a competitive offer and sellers are still getting very good competitive terms, but we are seeing way fewer offers than we're, we were getting six, seven months ago. And buyers are much more price conscious with what they're actually willing to offer sellers than they were seven months ago. Seven months ago, you could pick any price you wanted, whatever it was, and buyers were given it. Now, we're seeing buyers who for $10,000, they won't make an offer because they know that homes are selling for almost 100% of list price. So if they don't feel the value is there, it's spot on, they're passing and they're writing offers on other properties. But if you price your property competitively and you, you're priced to sell, we are still generating, at least for our sellers, multiple offers and bidding the price up, getting really good prices. If you're a buyer, what does this mean for you? Well, 
The market's still really competitive, so if you do want to buy, you do still have to write a very competitive offer, but you're only going up against likely, if it's our listings, on average, four to six uh, other buyers compared to 25. So there's way fewer buyers who are out there looking to pay these prices and still looking to, to buy in this market. So it's a little bit less competitive for you. You're not competing against 25, only let's call it five, but you are still competing. It is still a strong seller's market. So you gotta be ready to do all the same things that we've been doing for the last year and a half. Come in with your highest and best offer first, be ready to pay potentially above appraised value, have short loan approval periods, short inspection periods, all those things. You still have to write a strong offer, but it is a little bit less competitive and there are slightly better prices out there than there were five, six months ago. So it is still a really good time to be a buyer. Interest rates are still low, with the caveat being they have started to tick up. So if you're thinking about buying, you don't know whether to get off the fence or not, if you wanna buy or maybe renew your lease and, and, and wait this out, Home prices are continuing to go up. Even if there's fewer offers, the homes are still selling and the prices are still going up, but interest rates are also going up. So if you wait another six months and interest rates go up another half a point, you're losing about 5% of your purchasing power if interest rates go up another half a point. So you can afford 5% less home. This is important. You want to lock in that low interest rate right now. It is still a good time to be a buyer. Prices are continuing to rise. If you're in this property for 10 years, five years, you know it doesn't matter what happens with the market. If it goes up, it goes stagnant. No one's predicting prices to go down, but you know, if, even if it doesn't appreciate at the same pace, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be able to ride out any potential waves and prices going up or stagnating. You'll be just fine. Make sure you're buying the property that fits for your family for the long term, five years plus, and you will be just fine. So that's our market update for the month of November, 2021. If you have any questions about the market, and how it affects you, make sure you give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. We got your back when moving in South Florida.